know how you sort of started exploring since what made you want to do that and what what was like oh mm -hmm. i want to do this yeah i i had seen, seen a show, show and, and it's i, I guess it's a little different, different but i saw a show, show where um somebody was using midi and violin in in a pretty cool sort of pop context um and that's where i began to think about oh how do we transform this instrument so it's almost unrecognizable and there are certain ways that i was doing that already with distortion with other other effects but this idea that you could really take the instrument and move it it, it becomes almost like a cryptid like you just don't recognize it anymore um and it that fascinated me um and and i think the other the b part to that is you can kind of see behind me my theremin <laughs> um i had been getting very into just theremin and a little bit of analog synth stuff outside of the violin there's a big violin to theremin pipeline i noticed so um for what that's worth um but i was beginning to play around with learning about oscillators and envelopes and what are all of these these terms used um in in synthesis and 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 creating sound and being able to think about well how do i how do i move this onto the violin because i'm doing this in other places with keyboards and with the theremin i also played a little bit of digital theremin as well so there were there was a point at which i was like how do these two worlds come together and collide uh, and so I landed on picking up a couple synth pedals over uh, the last while, and it became, it's becoming a little more and more of an obsession. <laughs> so are you using this like in your own private projects or using this with the Flowbots? How are you using this? Mm, it's funny. We, we haven't had a lot of instances in previous, we're writing a lot now with the Flowbots where I'm, I'm using this in more now for future stuff with them. Um, they've traditionally had a much more organic sound with um, with their previous violist, with me now. Um, and now we're sort of playing around with newer sounds, more synthy sounds. I actually found um, synth pedals really useful for blending into more pop um, projects. It, it's funny because it's such an ostentatious sound that you get out of some of these pedals. I have a couple in front of me. Um, and they're they're very, you know, you know when you hear one, it's just like it, it grabs you kind of by the jugular. But um I found it's actually useful for camouflaging into pop, into uh a background of synthesizers. Um I there's a, a pop project I work with right now where we're doing a lot of stuff in Ableton and we're triggering samples on our push and there was a moment where I realized the kind of not necessarily dry. It's there were I was using effects, but the sound of a violin as it is um, began to sound like if you know when you show up to a costume party but you didn't wear an outfit, everybody else did, and like you feel a little out of place. So there was a point at which I was like, I actually want this very ostentatious um, pedal with a lot of bravado to kind of create a little more texture a little more color for the instrument to blend in with what's going on in the in the synth patterns underneath it with these like drum machines it just it began to become a another color another color to play with another texture to play with um, another flavor to play with in different different pop projects and then also with like um i work with a band where it's this is not the bulk of what I'm using for tone, but there are moments where things um, go there. They just start wiling out at the end of a song. Um, they, they're opening up into this kind of like psych rock um, flavor texture pattern and, and having the um, having the synth pedals for that to just have new colors to play with uh, is very useful. I find. Yeah, what pedals are you using? And uh, yeah, show us some of the stuff that you're messing with. 
Yeah. So I'll start. There's sort of um, a, I feel like this is kind of a common baby's first synth pedal. Um, it's the Boss SY1 um, synthesizer pedal. And it's got, it actually packs a real punch. Um, there are other models that are a little more advanced from the Boss. They have another one that has, I think, 50 more sounds on it, the SY2. Um, but this has, it has a lot. I think I think it's like they've said 121 sounds, something pretty crazy, which you can get a lot of mileage out of. Um, and it's it, there's things that are like more string synth sounds, which um, I know I know everybody has like a hot take on like, well, does, does a string synth sound below? I mean, aren't we trying to get away from that? But I think there's a time and a place. Um, there are more lead tones. There's actually really cool um, sequencer um, that you can basically be plugging in chords like so if you're playing uh if you're if you're playing like double stops or or strumming out chords you can sequence this and then this is a little more applicable i think for guitarists but um there's you can hold and freeze it um you know we have a little more decay but especially if you're plucking maybe not you want to use that um and then there are ways of affecting whether or not you um have more dry signal coming through so you can kind of sound like there's um synthesizers blooming under you you can get these tones blooming under you or you can have more just the straight synth sound coming out of it and uh yeah there's there's a lot in here bell tones there's um you can do synth bass stuff with it and then every there's not just like one sound for each one there's like a whole knob you wheel you can be dialing in really different sounds with which i love um and uh, affecting depth affecting tone um there's not a whole lot that you can well okay there's a lot you can do but there it's not quite as customizable as far as like going in and changing the waveform um as you can on some pedals but it's to me it's like a very it's a really good beginner not even beginner i mean anybody can really use this um it's a great pedal for for creating synth um synth sounds especially if you're not familiar with all of the language that's used in in what goes into a synth pedal um, i had never really cool. messed with synths before it was never a thing that i i you know i plug into one and go okay that's cool but i don't really need this until I did the Denizone Concerto, the fourth movement of the Denizone Concerto was just screaming for it. And so I used like three or four different synth sounds in there. And I really had to adjust the way I played because of the way the pedal reacts. What what have you found for that? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Like, so did you find, because tracking is obviously a really big part of what comes into a synth pedal. Was that something that you had to sort of be accounting for yeah absolutely some of the synths that i were using were monophonic so if you're if you accidentally bump another string or something it's going all haywire and it's you have to be super super careful with some of them about any extra noises you make or you can't slide into this note or like they all react differently to the way you play that yes i i'm so there with you so that's something i find with with the boss it's not super violin friendly on that front um in the same way uh like I, I just noticed that it's picking up everything and open strings too i mean being muting everything after you're playing is something that i found uh is very useful with working with that pedal the other synth pedal i use um is the maris enzo um i just love this thing. It's so great. Um, and what's really cool about this, there's so many cool things like, but what I love about it is it has a couple different modes. So there's actually um, a, a monophonic mode. There is a polyphonic mode. You can um, trigger in ARP mode um, where you can be sort of similar to the, the sequencer on the boss um, playing chords sort of over. Um, and, and the tracking on this is really really great and then there's also a, a dry mode where you can be using some of the effects without it you, without the oscillators triggering the synthesizer so um the you you can use like the kind of ring mod or um some of the other things on here just dry um but the the monophonic mode i found the tracking just for like single lines 
really, really effective and really great on here. Um, and there's also, so there's a an alt mode where you hold down a button and you can go into some of these knobs um, and play around more. And one of them has this uh, portamento. Um, so you have the, the, you can be sliding into notes, uh, which is amazing on here. Um, and, and it tracks pretty fast. Like the responsiveness is, I feel like I could be like playing like a reel or some kind of really fast fiddle tune and it would probably pick it up pretty well. Um, but there are things that commute differently off of the, in, into this pedal off of your playing. So like if I play like a slurred triplet really fast, um, like a synthesizer doesn't know about slurs. It just like, it doesn't innately get that. So it's going to start each note. It's going to sound like almost staccato in the way that like each note starts, the envelope starts and, and you're getting, it's like, da da da, even though it doesn't feel that way, it's a little out of body in that way. So when you're playing, you expect one sound and you're getting sonically something different. And it's cool too, depending on if you um i really like playing through these with the mix sort of all the way into the synth like no no dry signal coming through just synth um i just think if you're going to use it go go big or go home but there is something cool about having both textures together so you have um if you were to move the mix style sort of a little bit say over here towards like three o'clock um you'll still get a little bit of that dry signal coming through mostly the synth but it's it's neat that you'll hear if you played that triplet again you'll hear almost two textures against each other um which i love uh yeah there are certain things you have to be careful about muting everything too is just like in between playing i find this less of a problem with with monophonic lines but with polyphonic um stuff on here that can be a real hazard because depending on what key you're playing in, if it's sort of picking up, and, and I notice this especially, I play, you might see back here, my Volta, my dear Volta, um, but I, it's, yes, I love it so much, but it does seem to pick up a little bit of um, just the openness of it. It's not solid inside. There are, there are electronics and there's a little bit of hollow inside of that instrument. So mileage may vary like on a Viper or on an NS, um, there, that might be a bit of a, a cleaner, um, you're not, you, it might not pick up the open strings in the same way, I assume. Um, but something that I figure you kind of have to account for as you move through the, move through the pedal and, and play around with it. So do you find that putting it very, very early in your signal chain is the way to go? Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't want, uh, well, first it just needs a lot of your signal. Like it needs your attention. Um, it's, the tracking can get very muddled if it's behind anything. So you wouldn't want to put like something like distortion or, or reverb or, or delay in front of it. Um, this, this is the first thing after my tutor pedal. And, and then everything else comes after. And I do find I'm not really always using these with other effects. Um, I know some people do. Um, and there are, there have been some really cool sounds I've gotten like with the boss playing around with, um, there's like organ tones on here and then adding some interesting delay or distortion on top of that has created some like, or overdrive has created some really neat neat tones that I wasn't getting out of here. Um, but these, there's so much going on here that I feel like I'm like, oh, I almost have enough to play with right here. Um, but yeah, early in the signal chain is so important because otherwise you're going to be, um, it's going to be struggling to pick up what you're putting down. <laughs> yeah. I was using one of the, the, the synth blocks in the helix. So I did an EQ block first and dumped as much as I could 
all the low frequency stuff that I could, dumped as much high frequency stuff as I could to give it the like the cleanest, narrowest signal to work with to give myself the best chance of, of triggering it properly. Mm. And I actually, I haven't worked with any of the, I haven't worked with the Helix period. It's such a cool, it's a, kind of my next frontier, but um, how is the synth, uh, how are like the synth blocks in there? How, how, how does that, that, how, how do, do you, you like those? those? Yeah, they're good. Um, you, you know, it was for me having everything in the box was important because Ableton was doing so much of controlling of the Helix. Having external pedals was kind of going to defeat my purpose. They're they're okay. They're not as good, I think, as or as controllable as some of the outside pedals. If you're really a synth nut, you're probably going to want to work with with outside pedals. Mm, right. And but the cool thing, I mean, thinking about synth. The synth nut at like um, that was something that I felt like. Well, I don't really. I'm not really a math girl. I'm not really a huge synth girl when I was getting into these. Um, and uh, a lot of people who are very deep in that world. I mean, we just saw this past week, and you know how how deep in that world you can go. Um, Matt Manweiler had an amazing amazing set at the electric string summit um after asta which was really really cool modular synthesis huge rack and then violin so there's like obviously this infinite well that you can be digging into um but at the end of the day the cool thing to me about synth pedals are that like you can be learning a lot of this stuff you don't need to know everything about um how this works it's very daunting you don't need to know all of this when you go in you will probably learn it because there's just no other way around navigating these pedals um even if you intuitively learn it and don't have all the names for everything you're going to figure this out pretty quickly um you'll understand why something opens up and doesn't open and closes um when you hit a knob what you know what is that doing to the filter what is that doing when you when you hit the modulation like why does that suddenly sound detuned you know there are so many things that um that are just you you'll begin to understand attack and delay and or decay and um uh it'll make sense but there's something really cool about being able to navigate the space um and almost think of these as like they're almost these living breathing little creatures um on your pedal board there, because there's so much about them that's intangible, that feels like this response you wouldn't expect. I, in the way that when I hit um, a delay pedal or I hit distortion, like sometimes it's a little hot, but it's not something, I'm never getting something I didn't expect. And sometimes with a synth pedal, even when I've dialed everything in the way I thought it was going to be sound, there's just this little intangible that um, I have to troubleshoot you know, and solve on my end. And that's the kind of the fun of it to me. That was one of the things that like exactly right, the predictability of it Uh, with distortion Mm -hmm. and the stuff that I use a lot more. I know how it's going to act. We've spent enough time together. I know how it's going to act with the synth stuff. I don't feel like I had nearly as much control over what was going to come out. And part of my, I had to sort of shift my mentality to be like, man, you know, whatever happens, happens. That's actually part of it. The unpredictability is part of it. And you just, you have to embrace that and just go, well, this is what we're doing. Exactly. It's so chaotic. Um, But that is sort of the fun of it. And uh, not knowing exactly what you'll get out of each pass through is so delightful to me. Um, There are definitely times when um, I would forego a synth pedal, uh, you know, for certain things if you really, really need that predictability, but you can dial them in pretty well. I feel like there's, um, and, and these at the ones I've been using are pretty navigable on that front. I think it's a little, it's a little tough when you're managing, especially on the Enzo, um, you managing the alt mode as well. Um, there's just like, you're kind of dealing with another layer under your first layer of, of controls, but it's all really, really fun. And, and there's a lot of different synth pedals too on the market. Um, they, I mean, they all kind of do different things. These sort of are, it, it feels like the boss is like your most sort of like, like quintessential, um, the Enzo as well. But then there are talk box synths, um, like uh, TC Helicon makes an actual synth pedal that replicates like a talk box. I haven't seen a violin 
um, hooked up to using that, but that's kind of cool to me. Um, there was one a few years ago that was, there's, a, they, they tend to also fall into meme meme category kind of. Um, there was one that was a Vocaloid synth pedal. If you're familiar with those, they're this, in Japan, there was a software that was made probably like almost 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And it's basically um, before AI, you could create um, these computer generated voices that had syllables and they would, you'd be able to create input melodies and they would sing, but they would sound very, they would sound like, as you would expect, like very computer generated. Um, and th someone made a pedal that does that, but you can play through it. So it'll like, be like, nah, 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 nah. like, like these, these the really Miku pedal. Yes, yes, the yes, pedal. yes. <laughs> I've worked with a couple of people. Joe Denizone uses one of those. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's crazy. I'm so there. Those are hard to find now. They're like, every time I look, they're like, it's like an $800 uh, resale. That's cool. That's so cool that he has one. Yeah. I've seen um, two of them on pedal boards. He's got one. And then somebody came into the shop and was using one. I was like, ah, I know what that is. That makes me so happy. Somebody should just do a video on those. Cause they're, they're I'm so tickled that it exists. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I love that there's, it's such fertile ground for creativity. There's so many wacky, fun um, pedals, some that do some really amazing sounds. Um, I have seen the, there's the Electro Harmonics, their Synth 9 is a really great sounding pedal. I don't have that one, but I have played it a few times and I'm like, wow, this just a lot of good sounds in here. Um, yeah, and they're all a little different, you know, some of them are just monophonic. Some of them you can really like tap into polyphony, um, like the Enzo, um, just like get crazy with it. There's so many, so many different possibilities with them. One thing I've discovered with like, I guess the more traditional effects, um, like distortion and reverb and delay and those things is that you might have a sound in your head and you can kind of go chase after that sound with these pedals. My very limited experience with synth pedals is sort of different from that. Like you have to just kind of go, well, this is what this pedal sounds like. And either I like this sound and I can, I can play with it some, or I don't like this sound and it's just onto the next one. What is your experience in like discovering sounds with these? Do you have something in your head that you're trying to replicate or are you just like, well, that's what this pedal does? Yeah, I, so what I'm always after, I, there's, there's a point at which I, I will sort of surrender to the pedal, but what I'm often looking for, my kind of default sound that I first try to tap into is something um, kind of square wavy, almost chip tune-y, um, that, that was something that I first started trying to find on the Enzo and found very quickly, which I really um, it's a, it's just the sound I find is like very adaptable to different things. Being able to kind of sound like I'm in Mario is just fun. Um, so that's sort of like, you know, I guess, I guess some people have like a lick that they play when they're like, oh, I'm sending them to the instrument. That's like the first thing I sort of try to find on a, on a synth pedal. Um, but yeah, I agree. I, there's a lot of letting the, the pedal guide me, um, and letting the pedals capabilities unearth themselves as I'm playing and figuring that out. Um, I find I don't often lean into the more, there's like the, the longer decay, um, longer sustain kind of pad like sounds. I'm not always using those as much as I probably could. Um, there's like a lot, there's a lot of really cool synth sounds that come. You can really be expanding. Oh, I'm so sorry. Our dog is yelling. Hey buddy, come here. Say hi. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. We, we, um, the, the mailman, mailman came, came and, uh, uh that's, that's just, just an event, event every morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a point of, like, there's so much you can command out of them, but they also, there are limitations to them. Sort of letting the synth be what it is would probably be my default after I've, like, tried to tap into, like, how do I make this sound like a video game? Um, and, after that, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it does have a life of its own. It does create its own sonic landscape. 
Um, but there is something very fun about chasing it like as much as you can and dialing as much in, especially on something like this where there's just so much you can customize within a sound and you can be trying to dial in. Um, at the end of the day, though, it's sort of like the difference to me about between like using a synth pedal versus just being like, screw it, I'm going to go and get a whole Euro rack. And like, I mean, that's the point, right? Is like, we looked at that and we said, that's really cool. But I don't know if I have the time or the money or the the patience to like, sort through a lot of cables and, and you know you look at one of those and you're like that looks like my my worst nightmare like this could be very very difficult it's really cool and it's also like a lot of a lot of gear to travel with a lot of so you do kind of sacrifice a little bit of that with these but i don't even know if i use the term sacrifice it's not a negative thing there are a lot of happy accidents on on the pedals i find yeah, Matt Manweiler is going to be a guest on here in a few weeks. We're going to talk about whatever it is that he does. Um, but his show in Louisville just last week, like he brought in a full computer and this massive monitor and there's like 400 cables and I'm just, I'm having an anxiety attack just looking at it. Yeah, it was really fascinating to watch him set up as well. Um, because, I mean, I know there's just so much going on there, but there's like, it's, it's cool to just see where, like try to be processing and following and also watching him play and trying to figure out like, okay, where is like, he's triggering drums. Like, what is he doing for Like, how is that happening? And he's triggering all kinds of really incredible sounds that like, you, I almost wanted an overhead video of, of his setup as he was playing because trying to figure out from before the show and then after the show what i remember seeing of the rig watching him live from you know eye level it's like there's so much going on there so i can't wait to see what he has to talk about because that world is vast and i am very much not i'm 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 safe ashore and he's in the, on the deep end and it's awesome yeah i am that is way i'm way out of my element on that and uh and again i don't really work much with synths. I've been doing a lot of research before, um, you know, this conversation and before I've got to put together uh, sort of an explainer for people on what synths are and how do they work. And and mm -hmm. I had to learn a whole lot about this before I feel like I can even speak intelligently about it. There's a lot. I mean, there's I, I still feel like I'm learning a lot about it. I'm very DIY, I suppose. Like I've I've been teaching myself over the last couple of years um there's a lot of information like there's a ton out there and some of it is communicated very dryly um, um on the internet some of it it's like okay and some of it i think um there are a lot of good analogies used like um at one point i remember watching a video years ago where because i was having a really difficult time understanding the concept of envelope um and it was like well think of it like literally it envelops the sound and it's like it's it's turning this it's it's the thing that is shaping the sound if you think of it that way um because the term envelope doesn't really encapsulate what it does and we think about like letters so it's just a very different way of approaching sound and i mean as violinists i don't think we're 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 actually so distant from we, we have different terminology, um, but we are, we, even the way we organically produce sound, um, things like vibrato, you know, like are, it, it's not so different from what we're creating on synths um, and, and the synthesis of actual sound waves. Like we just have like the old fashioned way of doing it, you know, on, on an instrument, but I don't think it's, it's a, it seems daunting and I don't think it's like a horribly difficult thing initially to get into then there's like there are levels of of you see what matt manweiler's doing and you're like oh my god i'll never get this this there's so much of this it's so but eventually you do get there i feel like that that rabbit hole just goes deeper and deeper and deeper yeah i mean as violinists the ability to control the envelope and for the for the people watching it is the volume of your sound with respect to time Right, so here's your volume and here's time. So imagine you're easing into the note. Well, the envelope would start here and sort of open up. If we attack that note, 
like with a, a hard bow or a pick like a guitar, it would start very high. We've been controlling the envelope of our note since we first picked up a bow, right? Exactly. But do you feel like you're sort of giving up or maybe transferring some of that control to the synth pedal? Because now it's controlling the envelope of what's going on. Maybe you're giving it an initial uh, hit, but then it's kind of taken over from there. What is it like to sort of share control or hand over control with the pedal? Is, isn't that kind of a different mindset? Yeah. You know, I never really thought about like your, your shirt, your brain is, is half of it, but this, this is the other half. Um, yeah, it, it is a little out of body. There's, there's a point at which when I've played around with this enough and I've spent enough time on this, I now kind of know what I'm expecting. Um, and especially knowing the terminology better than when I started and knowing, um, knowing my vocabulary in the synth world better. I'm, I can dial things into where I think they're going to be and understand most of what I'm going to hear. Save for sometimes a few little unexpected discrepancies, happy accidents. Um, but there are, there are times when I started, when I'd start playing and then I would have, you know, no sustain and no decay. And so I'd be like trying to hit a long note, not knowing sort of, kind of what I was expecting out of a, out of a wave, um, out of a sound. And like there, it just, it's, it stops dead. And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. How is this, how is this going on? Or conversely, I'm plucking something, expecting these like little blippy kind of chip tuny, tiny sounds. And then all of a sudden the, the, the sustain is going on forever. The decay is going on forever. Um, the attack was very soft. Um, and like, it's like, it's fading in and I'm like, how, why is this happening? So the, there is a point at which one, now that I have this more dialed in, in my own head and I understand more of what's happening here, um, on the pedal, I, I can expect, I can, I can expect reasonably what I'm going to get, but there is something kind of fun about being able to let this take over at some point. Um, and I mean, it's sort of, we were talking to the point we were talking about before, like what, what sounds are you chasing or are you letting them sort of uncover themselves through, through playing around with this? I find I'm, there is a point, I would say it's like a, in 80, 20, where I, at this point now, maybe 85, 15, where I'm, I'm pretty dialed into where I want it to be. And then like the rest of it sort of goes from there but there have been times with um even especially when i'm trying to develop the right lead tone for a solo or something um where i've thought that i really wanted a very like uh closed sound or something and something much brighter came out and i thought no that's actually that's perfect for what i'm doing right now this is the right sound you know i don't know have you run into the same thing with synths have you found that they're they're kind of commanding some part of your brain as well. Yeah, totally. And it's in with, we've always said with other effects that you have to understand that the thing that's, and for me, it's a Viper. So the thing that's strapped to your body is an instrument, but then all the stuff underneath your feet, that's an instrument too. And you have to mm -hmm. learn how to play that instrument in conjunction with the one you're with, the one in your hand. I think with synths, it's even more that way, right? Totally, totally. Um, especially the things, I mean, the fact that you can arpeggiate out of these, you know, you can kind of trigger chord. some synth pedals, you can play one note and it'll trigger a chord based on it. Um, and, and like, there are things about it that really are suddenly out of your own brain and in, in the brain of something else. Um, and it's not less creative for that reason. I mean, especially if you are really navigating this and learning what you're doing and employing it in in cool and musical ways um it is thinking not for you but with you in that way um i find there are things when i when i hit um the sequencer mode on the boss or if i hit the arp mode on the enzo there are things that come out of that um that it might pick up chordally, especially on um, playing with violins because they track a little bit differently than the guitars that I think these are designed for initially. Um, like things will come out of that 
sonically, harmonically, even that I wasn't hearing um, there. And, and that's actually kind of a cool, happy accident too. It's like sometimes it's, it just feels like, Oh, that's an accident. Like, but there are times when it's like, no, this is actually really cool. I didn't, I didn't hear it this way. It tracked an open string. I didn't realize was vibrating. And that's actually a much cooler color in this chord that I wasn't expecting. Um, yeah, it's, it's thinking we're thinking in tandem, I think. Um, and most of the time, when you work with it a lot, you end up on the same page. I think it's a cool window into how the creative process in your brain works too. When when you hear certain sounds come out of the instrument, it will trigger different thought process. Like you will play licks that you would have never played before. Like, where did that come from? That's not a thing that I would have played with just a clean violin tone. Like my brain wouldn't have gone there. Right. Totally. And something I just really, really love about, about these is like, there, there are so many sounds that you wouldn't necessarily chase after initially, but when you have, um, it, it's like there's synthesizers just have this inherent nostalgia to me. I, I mean, you grow up kind of hearing them in different places. They're, they're so, they're much, um, we think of them kind of as this like futuristic sort of thing, but they're so old. They're not, they're, they've been around for a very long time. Um, uh, so it's like, there are sounds that I suddenly find myself trying to replicate from, uh, from childhood that were synth lines from like a Saturday morning cartoon or something that's in the back of my head. Just these like sort of things like, um, almost this like, what do I say? What's the, what's the thing? Like, um, not, what's like a Pavlov's bell response, like uh, kind of like that, that you're, not quite the same thing, like not, not the dog salivating or whatever it was, but like you hear this sound and like suddenly you want to like play it back. Um, this is not a great analogy, um, but like I'll hear something and suddenly I'm trying to like play some lick from like a, t- a TV show I haven't heard or watched in like 25 years, but it's, it's somewhere in my childhood brain. And like, and there's just a lot about them that I find I'm, tr- I'm constantly trying to recreate certain things too. Um, and hearing a sound, elsewhere trying to sit down and dial in on one of these something close to it um even even if just for for fun i think is really really exciting well Um, thank you so much for doing this i really appreciate you taking the time where can people find you where can they find your music uh yeah how can people follow you and support you in your art Awesome. Um, I will thank you for having me. Uh, I am so excited to be talking about synths and all things synth. Um, my name is Sarah Hubbard. I go by at Sprightly Sound on most social media. That's S P R I G H T L Y Sound. Um, I play with a band called the Flowbots. They are a hip hop band out of Denver. Um, I also play with an electronic project called Mr. Knobs, as well as a rock band called Shady Oaks and a country artist named Buckstein. All of these, not so much the country artists, but most of these I use synth pedals with. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you can find a lot of my various genre hopping dimension hopping music on those through those different artists on spotify or apple music or title or wherever people are streaming now um and uh yeah and i'm also on tiktok at violin fairy that's my one handle that's different than the rest <laughs> um sarah hubbard music www.sarahhubbardmusic.com um that's sarah with an h so 